All right, let's do it up. Let's click it up. Let's check what we got. Welcome, everyone. December 17th, 2017. Doing a live stream. Going to be doing live streams Sundays for a while. You know, I'm going to be doing a couple for when The Walking Dead's on hiatus, but also when it comes back, I'm going to be on the cruise, so I can't do that. So I won't be able to do occasional Sundays, but thank you all for joining me on this Sunday, December 17th, 2017. And uh, just going to wait for people to join in on here. Post your comments in the live chat or the comments. I read them when we uh, post it. So if anything, have, if anybody has any questions, if anybody's got any super chats or live streams or anything anybody wants to talk to or about or any subjects like that, post your comments in the live chat or the comments. So what's going on? Today is the first Sunday without The Walking Dead. Well, I'm sure it'll be replayed today. They always play it on, you know, Sundays over the break. I know they're going to be doing Breaking Bad. They're being played much because it's their biggest show they have. So what's going on, everybody? Hey, everybody. Here we go. Here we go. Connecting here. YouTube and internet and everything can be a little sluggish at times. So I apologize for that. What's going on with it? What are you guys watching over the break? Uh, please don't talk about certain things like Star Wars or anything. I haven't seen it yet. And uh, we're going to talk about some spoilers for the second half of season eight. And if you're not up to date, the spoiler warning for it. So again, don't do it. So happy holidays to everybody. To Ashley Efren, Tudor, Popped Poplio, Sebi Fox, Prince Al, Cecilia, all these people on there too. All you guys are awesome for joining me today. Yeah, The Punisher, I got to watch it. I watched the first two episodes of it. I watched uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. For the third time and uh it's awesome even after watching it again for the third time so guardians of the galaxy we watched we watched a little bit of the office from for you know holiday stuff so happy holidays to everybody on it so i uh good for everybody joining me on this sunday so i'm excited for everything and uh so what'd you think of the finale guys the mid-season finale we got a whole second half that we'll talk about towards, you know, the second half of this hour-long live stream. Uh, like I said, post your comments below or questions on there. So I'm, ex I'm especially excited for the second half of season eight, especially the way it ended. So it sucks that uh, it looks like the rumors and spoilers and everything were true about Coral, Carl. Carl Grimes, a little different than what they said, but people were like, it ain't going to happen. There's no way. But, you know, the reliable sources online haven't let it down on there, too. So hopefully we will uh, be able to pick up right where we left off in 809, which will be happening then. So 809 will be you know, the continuation of things. People are harding hope, having hope, I should say, sorry, about, you know, Carl living but it's not going to happen you know if you watch the talking dead i watched it again yesterday to see if i can gather anything else about what gimple said on there so it's just sad it's a bite and he said the way bites play out on the show so yeah josh i believe i agree with you kill some effing saviors yes let's get some not not just like minimal saviors too you know i want to have someone of relevance no one has been taken out or wounded or anything, even when they attacked the sanctuary. They had all the lieutenants lined up. I mean, that was ridiculous, right? So if anybody wants to do any super chats or post anything or questions, I will definitely answer them as we speak. But we got some information about the second half of season eight. And as we get closer to them, we will talk about it for more and more and more. And if you keep up the date of stuff, there's not much going around right now, but we have stuff over the summer and we have you know, a track record of knowing the information and, and sticking with it from reliable sources, just like the Carl you know, thing. It was pretty interesting when people were talking about Carl, if he was gonna die or not, and they couldn't believe it. And they said we were stupid and they don't believe that. Just like when Abraham and Glenn died and this channel's stupid and we don't know anything and blah, 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 and your sources suck and the information's dumb. Well, it came out to be true. So I haven't seen those people at all. And 
just like people on here. So hold on, let me just see something real fast. Get rid of some people on here. So yeah, there we go. Just some people are being stupid on the live chat. So just mess with that on there too. And I have people in the Walking Dead community that I post stuff on there. So uh, people are keeping up the date of it. And it's just people are rude in general. You know, it's a funny where they're on other channels and they sh say bad things and disrespectful things about this channel on there too. I got zero tolerance for that. So if you're going to post hateful stuff to me or another person in this group, my channel, the comments, the walking Dead community on there, I got zero tolerance for that. I ain't got time to mess around with people that are going to be, you know, trying to be a bully, trying to put people down on there too. Go do that on somewhere else on there too with it. You guys are the ones that I care about, my Walking Dead family, my PT peeps, people that want to talk about it, be open discussions about it, and I'm open for that. Even if you disagree with things like my orange backpack theory about it being cursed or whatever on there too, and that's fine. I don't under, I don't mind if people you know disagree with me. That's the way of the world, and it's fine. Just be respectful of it on there too. So, on there, guys, you know, you guys, most of the, you know, 98 percent of the people in here are fine. It's just the one or two percent that I gotta. You know clean house with it on there too so just putting that disclaimer out but you know thank you for all the connections and the kind words you guys are awesome on there as well so let's talk about some questions on here too if you ask some questions sorry i get distracted by people posting dumb stuff in the live chat so um what orange backpack well there's a theory on my channel so if you haven't subscribed to the channel please hit that subscribe button we have a big goal of 100,000 subscribers. So I'm trying to really reach that goal. It really mean a lot to me for that, for us, for everything on there as well. And uh, yep, Chandler cut his hair, Sefi Lopozo, or Lopazo, sorry you say that. He just cut his hair and like really cut his hair this time too. And he probably cut it before or whatever, and now it's just finally cut off. It's out of a mullet. It's out of a thing here too. He was trolling us on there the whole time. So, but you know, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do. We post stuff all the time, year round, every day, and except when we go on vacation and stuff. Like we're going on the walking Walker Stalker cruise at the end of uh, January 2018. This will be our third cruise, and we have a lot of good information, a lot of good stuff on there too. So, uh, pretty cool, William Lee, getting ready for your first book for Christmas. Awesome, yeah, guys. Uh, the Fight for Us book series. I got a lot of good content coming with that. And it's, it's, really, it's doing really well. Uh, hopefully we get a little more sales, a little more things with Kindle and just other versions of it, paperback, trying to get different language versions so we can go around worldwide. So um, if you can, guys, pick up the book. This is the first book right here. It's on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, Kindle versions. Um, the link is in the description to pick it up online to Amazon. And um, we're trying to make a big thing of this, too. I'm really pushing hard for it. I'm really doing a lot of stuff on there for it. I'm really loving the uh, book series, and I love writing it, and I love talking about it with you guys. So uh, let me answer some questions here. Ashley wrote, do you think any other cast members are bothered by how Gimple lied to Chandler? Um, yes, I believe that a lot of people are, and more stuff has come out. I believe like Andrew Lincoln is finding it hard and hard to do that. So I think that people, thank you, I may nam for ordering the book. I'm excited for you guys to read it on there too. Um, but I believe people are pissed that Chandler got written off for, you know, he's not there. He's been there for, you know, eight seasons now. And it's a shame because he's been there since season one. He's one of the original Atlanta five. Now is Atlanta three. Whether you believe Morgan is a part of that or not, I don't because he's never made it to Atlanta. He was never part of Atlanta with Shane and Lori and Carl and Glenn and all. He never made it there. We saw him at, you know, in season three, link back up with Rick and them too. So Morgan is not part of the Atlanta five to initially. It wasn't Atlanta six, so however you want to look at it. But either way, he's he's gone. Carl or Carl eventually will be gone. And the big thing about episode 809 is... It's supposed to, I think it's supposed to be another 90-minute episode when it comes back February 25th in the United States, so the 26th in the UK and, I guess, you know, uh, South America. But I like the idea of having closure with it. I don't like the idea of him dying, but I like the idea of having one more episode with it. But I think it's going to come down to episode 809 is going to be Carl trying to convince Rick to live with the saviors and have them both survive and that not all the saviors are bad and you got to keep working with them and make it work. And I think that needs to go bye-bye. 
I think you keep some saviors alive, of course, ones that don't yield. And a great thing has come up to comments before is like you go up to people and you say, who are you? And if they see Negan, they're dead. If you do that, you know, that's it. That's the best way to weed people out. If people are going to jump ship, because they would flip-flop. You know, Dylan might flip-flop. Jared eventually has to go bye-bye. We have some information about that, but he's going to go bye-bye too. Uh, Jeff Smith, you can buy my book on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, Kindle versions. A link is in the description to this video and every video. It's a book one on there, but Amazon.com, just type in fight, the number four, and US on there. So uh, you can get it in a lot of different places. If you have a Kindle, you can get it. If you have Amazon.com, Barnes&Noble.com, Prime Shipping, you can get it right away. So <clears throat> there's uh, four books right now, and uh, it's it's going pretty good. I'm writing book five. I'm on the second chapter today, and I'm getting there. I got to read it out, and it's some good, exciting stuff. Books three and four are, are very excited. So, But I'm excited. Thank you for everybody picking up the book on there as well. Um, Ashley, you're, you're asking some good questions here. I think Gavin is the one saver I'd like to see survive. He seems legit. Um, I believe Gavin will either do two things. He'll probably either die in episode 809 or he survives the entire time and then flips over to Rick's side is the only thing I can think of. Because if you noticed in episode 808, we saw Morgan listening to the wall. And he's listening to Gavin and Ezekiel. So does Morgan intervene and kill Gavin and take him out? Does Gavin get away? I think Gavin can do either thing. Either he dies right away in 809 or survives on there. And, you know, I have some information about the Morgan thing that I want to talk about probably in a whole other video, but it explains what the future of Morgan is from some information that I got from some reliable sources that Morgan We'll understand what happens with Morgan at the end of episode of season eight, why he goes over to Fear the Walking Dead. So we'll talk about that more, but Morgan's not going to be on The Walking Dead anymore. So that sucks because I like Morgan and I don't know if they're trying to do things to, to try to connect the th- things, the shows, the theories are going around of what's going to happen. If the whispers are going to be on Fear the Walking Dead now. That would be crappy in my eyes. I want to see Alpha with Rick. I don't want to see Alpha with Madison or Morgan on there too. So Gimple is the showrunner to both shows now. So we know how people feel about Scott Gimple. Is he going to mess up Fear the Walking Dead? Is he going to approve Fear the Walking Dead? Is he just going to go over to Fear the Walking Dead and be gone from The Walking Dead? I know that there's a petition going around. I have the links on a lot of different places. People have the, you can go to my Facebook you can go to my Instagram at the PT channel on Instagram. People have been posting that the petition the petition on there and i believe there's like 23,000 signatures on that about getting rid of Scott Gimple on there so do you think Simon will survive um i think he goes all the way to episodes 15 and 16 and then i don't know if he dies in the finale or not or he tries to do something because i don't know how simon and maggie and carl uh, carl sorry and daryl and dwight and maggie and everybody can coexist but you know what i didn't understand too guys why did uh simon let maggie go i thought the whole thing about it was getting rid of putting maggie the widow the king and rick towards on the fence at the sanctuary why did simon had them dead to dead to rights simon had maggie so is simon redeemable is simon can help them simon can actually flip over there i don't know on there so yeah look at that petition you know deny oteg one petition has forty two thousand signatures to get rid of gimbal that's crazy that people really hate it that much so why would you write that in there you if you put that in the script whether it's kirkman or gimbal whoever has the final say on that why would you do that why would you have that happen where you like i'm gonna write this in here carl gets bit helping sadiq we don't find out the two episodes carl you know ends with carl's bite fades away fades to black done why would you have that why would you ever write that to get rid of carl on the show carl's not the biggest person on the show by any means i think rick daryl maggie even michonne daryl carol morgan are bigger parts than carl is but carl's connected with rick so the going forward in the storylines with the comic and stuff and the comic and the show are different i know but here's a major turn just like the andrea dying thing was a major turn from the comic and the and the show carl this is a major thing on there too so i like the question right there will enid replace carl 
I guess what the word is, is that they're going to give up Carl's parts with Lydia and the storyline going forward with other people. So does does Alpha is Alpha a boy or a girl? Is Beta a boy or a girl? Or a woman or a man? And is Lydia a boy or a girl? Is that going to happen? Or is 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 Lydia going to be you know? A different a male now is going to be Leo or going to be Leonard or something like that, whatever it would be, or something totally different. And it, it hooks up with Enid or, you know, Judith. They're joking. They're going to have a time jump that Judith's going to be 25 when they time jump there, but we'll see how it happens with it. So that's a great question. What do you think will happen with Oceanside? Well, the way it makes it look is that Oceanside is, you know, because if you remember, Enid killed Natanya in the dark when they had this the the swords on the spears or whatever they had they had no guns but Enid shot Natanya especially when Aaron's like you're going to need your gun but he so Enid killed Natanya and then we saw Cindy over top the body crying and then it, we don't see them again for the rest of the episode so we'll see that what happens with them I believe they're going to come back around but if I was Cindy and them why would that sway me to come to your side you just killed my grandmother you just killed a family member of mine you killed a person of our community our leader nonetheless why would you have done that so uh tutor walking dead 95 you liked issue 174 the question did i like 174 that was the negan uh, issue uh solitary it was okay a solitary life um it was okay for 174 i'm not the biggest negan fan even though he's far superior in the comics i think it was okay I didn't really like the Maggie thing with, I don't want to give too many spoilers away because if you haven't read it, but it was okay. It was kind of closure with, with certain aspects of it. And then we'll see what happens with Negan. Negan still going forward there, but I'm more excited about the new word order storyline NWO starting January for the six part series of it. I'm more excited about that. And I think this was a nice little thing going forward and the uh, wrapping up that storyline with, you know, Negan and Maggie and, you know, and Dante and stuff. So we'll see what happens, but I'm excited for the uh, issue 175 in January. So um, I'm glad you guys can join me this Sunday, December 17th. Um, what do you guys think of episode 808? What if Carl didn't die? Did you like it? Because like, take that out of the equation because that sucks. No one's going to like that. There's going to be some Carl haters on there, but did you like episode 808 besides on there? So people, <laughs> Jacob, who was in the helicopter? We don't know who was in the helicopter yet. We don't know anything about that. Was it a hallucination? Did we see the helicopter? Was it just a callback? Is it something setting up so far down the road? But is it NWO? Is it something to do with the scavengers on there? But I don't know. We just don't know yet. I'm excited for it. So um, you want to see someone's asking me for the books. So that's book one right there. Fight for us. Book two. Sorry, I got to just do my arbitrary uh, connection there. Book three, Refuge. And so Carl going to die is going to kill the show even more than it did. So sorry. And the last book. Conquered is available now. Well, all of them are available now. That's book four. So four books on there. Working on book five. It's called Agreement um, for book five on there. So book <laughs> book two is the slow one. It's a little slower because I had to connect some of the things, but my favorite ones are books three and four. For that, it's definitely not slow by any means, books three and four. Book two kind of gets a little story to connect everything, but it, it ends pretty good. It ends, there's a lot of stuff going around there on this too. So, uh, I don't know where this show is going, whether it's going to lose a lot of people on there too, but Jerry, yes, they're available on Amazon, amazon.com. There's a link in the description to the, on this video right here. It says, uh, in the description and in every video, it says fight for us. Book one link on Amazon right there. If you, uh, let me see if it if it'll work on here if I can if I can post it on the live chat if it'll let me. So that's that's a link right there for it for book one. Take you to Amazon for it if you got Prime and everything it works pretty good. So the future of the show episode, season eight episode nine comes back February twenty fifth and. It's going to be, I think it's extended for sure. I think it's even 90 minutes, but Carl is going to be a big focal point of it because it's his last episode, you know, which people don't believe they have on there to it. 
Um, I just don't like the idea of Carl going out the way he did. I don't like Carl dying by any means, but I don't like the way it happened. And we didn't really see it. Out of regards of if you want to say that the walker we have here and he rolled over, but when they go to show where the walker is coming towards him, is kind of like crawling towards him, they cut to the walker that Sadiq kills. So you don't even see the bite. And then he kind of glances down at his, his side and there's no pain. He doesn't grab it. He doesn't have blood on his hand. That he, you don't see anything. There's just no thing on there too. So if you're just joining me, guys, uh, thank you for joining me this Sunday. I'm going to go probably another 40 minutes. So post your questions, super chats, live chats, all that good stuff. I'm all, all there for it. So I... Uh, it just sucks about Carl. I don't know exactly what they were trying to do, but the more and more I read about it, Carl's just not going to be on the show because of Gimple. Gimple wrote it down and wrote it out. So who does who has the final say? Does Kirkman have the final say? And Kirk was like, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. Kill Carl off. Was it a monetary thing? That we, were you going to have to pay Carl more because he turned 18? Because he's been on this season. He's been on the show for eight seasons now. Like, what, what, what do you think of that, guys? I think it just makes sense that it is a monetary issue. I think it is a situation that sucks that people are going to, and budget cuts are going to come around. And people don't realize, though, but the, the cast is only under contract till season eight right now. They have no season nine contracts. They're trying to get all that situated. And season nine is supposedly greenlit or not or renewed. But do we have seasons nine, 10, and 11? Maybe, maybe not. I, uh, you know, I think we get to seasons 10 and 11. I think we get there, but is the show going to be impacted pretty poorly? Do we have half as many viewers? Do people give up on the show? I mean, it's still doing great. I mean, even when it's getting 8 million viewers every day, every day, every Sunday, I think that it's just going to be cut in half eventually down to four, three, four million. Because people, I'm, I'm never going to give up on the show. I'm going to watch it till it dies, till it ends, while they do whatever with it, where they take a break or they make movies out of it, whatever they're going to do. I'm still going to read the comics. But you're alienating a lot of people by what the writing has been since season seven, season eight, and then where does it go from here? You know? So I don't know if Andrew Lincoln will leave. Great question. Will he leave? I don't know. He's got a great gig. He's got a great dad. He's got a great, you know, losing his son on the show can't be good, but I like it. I haven't. Great question. Are my Jonasi? Um, what has Kirkman said about Carl? No, I don't know. That's a great. I don't see anywhere. Like what has Kirkman said about Carl leaving? I don't know. I don't know what Kirkman has said about it. That's a great uh, question. What has Kirkman said? What has re- <laughs> All I said was know is that Gimple said it was a writing decision. It's it's the writing for the show. I don't know. If no one asks it on the cruise, I'm going to be kind of pissed because Robert Kirkman is going to be on the cruise at the end of January next year. So I might have to get in line and ask him that because he hopefully does a panel, I guess, if he doesn't do a panel because we kind of want to know, like, did he have a hand and did he say anything that he agreed with the Carl dying? Because what if he was totally against it? And he couldn't do anything about it. He doesn't own the Walking Dead TV show solely. I think there's a group of them. Was it torn? Did this decision, was it unanimous? Was it not? was a lot of things. So people keep asking, will Andrew Lincoln leave? I don't think so. He's got a great job. He's making, you know, 90000 per episode. Probably season nine. Without Carl, without the CGI budget, can be he can make a hundred grand an episode. Him and Norman Reedus make the most money out of the uh, cast. So I don't know. We're going to lose Morgan to Fear the Walking Dead, so that budget's going to go there. And you don't really realize it though, but the budget and the money does play a factor on shows like this, especially after eight seasons of a show. People want more money. People want more perks. They want this, even though they love doing it. Maybe you want to be on the show more. Maybe you want to be on the show less. Maybe you want stuff to happen, be in the movies, whatever stuff happens in people's lives. You know, Lauren Cohan is going to be in another movie. Denai Guerrero has been in other movies. Andrew Lincoln hasn't really done anything outside of The Walking Dead. Jeffrey Dean Morgan's in other stuff. Norman Reedus is in other stuff. So I would assume that Andrew Lincoln is content with his job. I doubt that he really wants to get rid of that, and he's, he's on there as well. So... 
I don't think ACC, great question. Isn't Rick's contract up as well? Yeah, no one has a contract in the season nine. Season eight is where everybody stops. You know, Norman Reedus, Andrew Lincoln, Denai Guerrero, they don't have any contracts right now past the season eight. I think they're working on that. So that's um, crazy to think that if contracts don't get figured out, what's that going to mean for the future of characters of the show? It's only going to hurt in my eyes, too. The other thing I want to say is that I would have rather had Carl Grimes be recast if they couldn't afford Chandler Riggs and they didn't think he was worth anymore. And that's just speculation. And what I'm saying is that the contract, you know, was up and they didn't want to pay him more money or whatever. What if, you know, what if Chandler Riggs wanted 90000 100000 per episode? Is he worth that? Maybe not. Maybe AMC doesn't want to do that. Maybe they didn't see his value. And they just want to get rid of the character. So, I mean, I know Dale, the guy who played Dale in season two, he uh, wanted to be off the show when Frank Darabont left. And they were like, okay, see you later. They wrote him out. And then he's like, oh, actually, I want to stay. I want to stay. And they wrote him out and killed him. <laughs> and he was gone. So, and then the whole thing with uh, Andrea, Lauren Cohan, not, uh, not good. She was, had an eight-year contract. And they wrote her off, and they did this when the showrunner and stuff came in. And then I, they probably had to settle some of that eight-year contract. They couldn't probably pay her all of it, obviously. But, you know, that could have been Andrea's death in season eight instead of Carl's. We talk about that in a couple of videos if you haven't checked it out. But that's a crazy fun fact for you that, you know, the Andrea actor, who really wasn't a great actress or the writing was bad or something was off with it, even though she's been in some other stuff and she was okay like The Mist and dumb and dumber or dumb and dumber two, whatever it actually was she's been in some other stuff and some other shows and i thought she was okay but it's a shame that uh stuff happened with that actress and the part of andrea because if we don't have it then you know if andrea is still on the show we she probably get she probably stays with rick and we don't have rashon and stuff and i liked i like rick and michonne together some people like it some people hate it but i like rashon so it's just kind of crazy these little avenues and this stuff happen i'm sure stuff come will come out when the walking dead is all said and done whether it's 11 seasons 12 seasons 15 seasons whatever it is there's going to be stuff to come out about a problem with Gimple or this or the writing or money or a monetary stuff. There's going to be tell-all books. There's going to be documentaries. There's no way because this show is huge. And even when it's done, people are going to want to know information of what happened here and what happened there. So I I just guarantee stuff's going to come out down the road. There's going to be a documentary series of the behind the walking dead or behind the dead or something like that when it's going to happen and stuff's going to come out. And we'll see the real stuff here because not everyone gets along in the walking dead universe. Not all the cast and the crew and the writers and stuff are going to get along. I would assume a lot of the actors get along, but not everyone's going to do that. So, but hopefully people don't give up on season eight of the walking dead because I think it was really good up until the Carl death. The Shiva death was kind of, but the Carl death, the way it was done and acted out and stuff, it was even though Carl's voice is like, he's not here, I'm Batman. He kind of had that deep trying voice a little bit to try to throw it off. Yeah, I'm Carl. But <laughs> even though Chandler Riggs did a good job with it, he, he was doing, he, he, that was the main role of him. That was the Chandler Riggs, Carl Grimes episode by far. That was mainly about that. I think that Chandler Riggs was getting better at playing the role and they had more and more. Because if you look at the past seasons, which I'll probably watch them over the break, Carl's not in a lot of stuff. He was in high school and he was this and he was in there for, I'm I'm pretty sure that he was only in probably like three or four episodes or he'd miss like half a season and then come after the second half of the season. Or he was probably out of 16 episode seasons, he's probably in like six episodes a lot of the seasons. So he wasn't the biggest part, but he had more time to do that now and with him, with him graduating high school because he just turned 18. And it's just a lot of craziness to have that. I'm just... Don't like like the idea of, of Carl not being there and what, what it's going to do to Rick and Michonne and you know everything. It's going to bring everybody together because if you saw the sneak peek on Talking Dead, Dwight is trying to help everybody escape the tunnels and, and get back up you know, in Alexandria. Because Alexandria, Alexandria has blown the crap. they got to rebuild that. So they're going to eventually go to the hilltop to it. So 
let me answer some of these questions here. People are posting away. Sorry if I haven't answered them. But um, does anyone else blame Jesus for this? I don't think so. I mean, I don't think he, he didn't have like an opportunity to kill Negan or stop anything or anybody from going to Alexandria. But if Hilltop gets overthrown, which eventually there's going to be a big battle at Hilltop, if you know the comics, that that's going to be the next battle scene because Alexandria is blown up, blown up and they're going to have to leave Alexandria and go to the Hilltop for home base. So I like Maggie putting that, that savior she shot, I think it was Dean was his name, in the box. And she's like, I'm not messing around. Put this out there where they can see it. Maggie's the toughest one out of anyone there, too, going to fight. I mean, Daryl is pretty tough as well with the fight, maintaining to fight. Carol's pretty good. Morgan as well, too. But I see Maggie is, is right up there with them this season. She's been in a rock and a hard place with saving certain saviors and not really wanting to do it and whatever. And I, I just don't know why there's so many saviors still alive. There's so many alive at Hilltop. There's so many that attacked, you know, Rick's at Alexandria the kingdom, they're all over the place still. They're freaking fungus. They're locusts all over the place. It's freaking ridiculous. So I don't blame Jesus at all. I don't think Jesus is to blame for that, even though I don't like... We'll see how, how it goes with uh, the stuff going forward in the second half. But And, and did you notice, too, I see people saying, I blame Daryl. Anyone else still like him, though? Uh, World Alone. I like Daryl. Daryl is to blame. That's for sure. People are going to say like, oh, because you heard Daryl ask Dwight, you know, point blank. Was it what we did? What I did? And they said it was Eugene. People are kind of taking the heat off of Daryl because Daryl is the, the, you know, the poster boy of The Walking Dead. And he's can't do no wrong and on there, too. So I like Daryl. Don't get me wrong. I, I still love Daryl, too, ACC and everybody who loves Daryl. But Daryl's to blame a little bit, too. I'm just thinking there as well. And then... You think they're saving sweet deaths of savers for the end? Hopefully. They, I had another video that I posted too. When's it going to be satisfying for people, for the fans of The Walking Dead? There are people that like Negan and the saviors and this on there too. But the viewership has gone down and obviously the ratings have go, gone down for a reason. And it has to be part of the Negan and the storyline and the writing and the deaths and all that stuff all coming together. But... When are we going to get a savior death that means something? And hopefully it's not Gavin because people like him. Hopefully it's somebody that matters on there too. I mean, the biggest death so far is Davey. Then now he was killed by he was killed by Negan, and then Fat Joey who was killed by Daryl. So the biggest death that was there is Fat Joey. Which you know, if you follow me on Instagram, Flava Hoove is him. He likes some of my pictures and stuff on there too, which is pretty cool on there too. But Fat Joey is on Instagram as Flava Hoove. But Daryl is definitely partially to blame. I don't know how Eugene got all those out, whether he made the bullets and he did this and whatever, and they had enough down there as well. So, Adam, I don't know if the spoilers are really killing the show or the facts that come out because I know all the spoilers that come out before the episodes on most episodes, even though I'll talk about episode 808, why the spoilers weren't out. But And I still watch it even when I know it. I'll watch the episode three times through the app on AMC, through AMC on TV, through a lot of stuff. I'll watch it all the time. And I like Fat Joey too, World Alone for sure. Um, but the only thing I'm really glad that they didn't do, which would have been really terrible, is if they killed Jerry. That to me would have been even worse for the episode. Because I liked the episode 808 all around it, except for the ending, of course, too. So, you know... Let me do a, the opinion poll question here. Do you think spoilers ruin the show? Do you think so? Because the highest episode of the series, or at least one of them, was episode 701. Where the spoilers were put out there very early about who died. Abraham and Glenn. And that was still the highest rated, or one of the highest rated shows and viewed shows our episodes of the show. I should say the highest episode of one of them, at least, was episode 701, where people wanted to know what happened in the lineup. Who did Negan pick? And if you knew this channel then, if you knew a lot of stuff going around, we knew that it was Abraham and Glenn. But people still watched it. I know I still did. And it was one of the biggest things ever. I think it's the writing more than that on there, too. 
The spoilers to me are also, spoilers don't tell you the whole entire episode or where Easter eggs are or how the dialogue goes down or stuff, this and that. And also people want to know if it's true or not to see if the spoilers are correct. I don't think they do anything. I just think people watch it the next day on TiVo. TiVo, that's not even a thing. DVR, people don't even know what TiVo is anymore probably, right? Um, DVR, watching it online. I don't know how the ratings are. Like if I watch it on my AMC app, does that get a view? Does that count towards that? Maybe, maybe not. Are people bootlegging it? Are people having watch parties? People are getting rid of cable more and more and more. They aren't using it. So if you're watching you know, a bootleg version of it, or you're, you know, however you're watching it, that's not affecting how the viewers are. A lot of things are happening with the future of cable and everything there too. Uh, hopefully I didn't lose connection. Probably did though. That's what this usually means. But okay, here we go. I should be back. Uh, YouTube kind of slipped there. So I don't know. I like it. People want to know stuff. I use that. So again, like right there, my raises one. You use Sling TV. If you watch it on Sling, where a lot of people do, does that count as viewers? Does that number count towards the viewers of the total viewer numbers? Does that go for the 8.8 8 million viewers on there too? So I'm thinking that's going to be that. So enough of that <laughs> crap on there too. Going forward, episode 809 is going to be the Carl stuff, which I'm tired of. How about you guys? The concept of everyone working together and the harping of that is saying you got to work together man you got to stick together you got to work this so what if you want your stuff no don't come in and take that i don't really like that hard thing so i want to see rick take out negan and the saviors and rick being the main guy running things again i don't want them working together as working as everybody wants it to be it's a, it's the bigger thing it's not about you it's about the world it's about rebuilding stuff you got that, but and that's why they didn't have Negan kill Carl because if Negan killed Carl, then there's no way that you could keep Negan alive, and that's what they want to do. They want to have Negan and Rick side by side, kumbaya, taking the world over on there too. So, but see, like people use it, like that's what I'm saying. People, people are saying Sling doesn't count. So if you watch it on Sling or Direct TV or you, you record it and you do that, people don't. That doesn't count. And what is if you have 15 people in your house? that watch it, that counts as one view, right? Technically, it's 15, but the, the TV doesn't know how many people are watching it if it's one or on there too. So either way, the viewership is there, the ad money is there, there's tons of ads, AMC's making a killing off of this, The Walking Dead, Kirk and all these people are, are doing that too. So who will put Carl down? Great question. It's either between Rick or Michonne. Who would you want to do that? To me, I think Michonne does it over Rick, but I could see Rick doing it as well. So who is the one to put down, you know, Carl? Because you know it's going to happen. He can't really get out of there and just <laughs> go attack the the uh, saviors. So he's probably going to die right there in the sewer, and then they'll bury him with the uh, the breakdown we had of the trailer of it. So uh, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, I didn't want to cough into the microphone. But I don't know what's going to happen in the episodes. 809 and you know, 810 but exactly but i know it's going to be about carl and i believe the future of the scavengers will be revealed good bad and indifferent they need to go in my book and then there's going to be some action you know rick's going to have some cool stuff he's got a he's got an axe and a couple pictures you know michonne and rick are going to be working together side by side what's going to happen with daryl and rick are they going to get you know be brothers in arms again i think they'll be okay but you know, the death of Carl is going to bring everybody together, working together to the common goal of ending the war, bringing peace together, bringing everybody there too. So I like that idea of it, but I don't know. Do you want Negan to live or die? What do you think, guys? Post your uh, live chat in there. Any super chats want to give a shout out to you guys or anything like that? I definitely will. So do you think Rick is going to kill Negan at the end of the season? Great question. I don't think so. What do you guys think? Do you want that to happen? Do you want Negan to die or live? Because the future of it is important of it. But the future of the show might not last. What if the show ends at season 10? And we don't get all the great storylines of Negan on there too as well. So we'll see. Contracts. We'll see. I know. I don't know how many years Negan signed on for. Well, Jeffrey D. Morgan signed on to play Negan. But I know it's got to be more than two because it would be 
season six at the end of it, season seven, and all of season eight. So well, if it, it might be a three-year deal. I think it would make sense to have a three-year deal. So it might go in the season nine for it. But he might be, be the only one because he came in later for it. And I don't know what's up with Stephen Ogg and stuff. I would love for somebody to post those questions or to like the sources and have that information, whether it's comicbook.com or, you know, the spoiler sites, if they knew that information, because I would love to know what the contracts say, because the contracts depict how long these actors and the characters are going to be alive for that, because clearly they're not recasting anything. So, uh, of course, Eric, any, any questions? I love answering questions on here. So sorry if I get, you know, jumping around, but there's a lot of questions come up on here too. So exactly. Let my mercy prevail over my wrath has been as a common line concept since episode 801 so that's going to come back around and we saw red eye rick say it he's like my mercy prevails over my wrath and he's like crying and he's something happened that's probably the end of the war that might be the end of you know 816 when it very ends because it's going to last the entire season season eight is going to be all out war that's going to be the all out war season it's going to be it and then we're going to move move to the new beginning storyline in season nine when it comes around and they'll start filming and it'll be interesting to see what happens for that too so hopefully i really want to really we get the information about contracts the future of it so who takes over the carl storyline on there um I'm not sure earl sutton storyline so i don't, i don't know what happens with enid and i don't know what happens with the future of that whole thing with lydia and and stuff going forward with it but i think that I know. Great question. Are they gonna Are they gonna wait to? I would assume Carl's gonna die, and then they they take him out because Carl looks terrible. Uh, Mike Allen, I would I would kill Negan. I would get rid of Negan because Negan and the Sabers are kind of are killing the uh, the ratings in the show for what it is. And we want Rick to be back on top. And if Carl can die, Negan can definitely die. I mean, if you're gonna kill Carl off. So why no one's untouchable on the show they love to say that anyone anyone can die anyone can die at any time but i doubt rick can die daryl can die michonne carol morgan evidently morgan's just jumping ship over fear of the walking dead so i think that's a big i think fear of the walking dead might be greatly improved in season four as well with morgan jumping over there so that's a good segue let me let me talk about that a little bit here morgan so because Adam Ford is excited for fear and I'm excited for fear. I, I like season three and it's going there too. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Tamara, Tamara, or Tamara Brock Steele. I, uh, I'm not a fan of Jared. That's for sure. If anyone likes Jared, then I just don't know what to tell you about that. But people have said a good point too, before I get to the Morgan stuff is that there would be a lot of people like that in a zombie apocalypse. And I'm taking note of that in my books. Because not everyone's going to be friendly and nice and cordial and be kumbaya over here, too. There's going to be some selfish, arrogant, irritated people on there as well. And that's that. I'm going to write more and more of that in my book, the real life situations that would be on there as well. There'd be a bunch of Jareds in the world, too. So, But I would have zero tolerance for that, too. Like if I ran up on someone like that, too, and I was dealing with this, Jared, <laughs> you'd be getting taken out real quick. You know, I, I don't trust people like that. And people in the world nowadays, you got to put up with them and be like, can you believe this guy? And they just leave and get get on with your life. But, you know, in that world, it's just crazy. So has Heath's return been effects all Carl's death uh, and necessary rewrites that will happen to? I don't know. That's a good question, Ashley, about Heath. You know, with Carl going out, I don't think that affects anything. I think Carl's death affects Rick more than anything. I think Heath will bring the saviors around so yeah exactly right you know what's up with the orange backpack for jared that's for sure he needs you know a backpack for his backpack and he's just so like imagine if he was not with the saviors he would not be this cocky guy jared is what i'm talking about on there too so yes heath has not returned yet but heath will come back around what the word is saying that eventually probably season nine gimple said it's highly unlikely that that'll happen that Heath will come around this season so I'm gonna wait to think I think he introduces my theory about the PPP card and all that stuff we got a bunch of different videos on it too so my raisins great question great point there should be some teenage gangs 
that is definitely going to be in the future of my book series. I thought about that. I wrote it. I have a, I have a notebook. I, well, I have two notebooks, but I have one notebook that I write and jot down ideas of it. So it's great that on there too. So Donna Dawson, you think the orange backpack is a prop? Obviously, it's a prop. But the connection behind all that is there. The, the writing behind there is not, there's Easter eggs, connections, callbacks, subtle things that hide things on there as well. They don't just, there's no re, there's no way that they just have one backpack or a bag that gets reused all the different seasons. All these years, they would find stuff on the run, on the scavenger. When they were at the, uh, the thing with the guns and the carnival thing with the bad CGI deer, there was probably a, mil a, a million military people bags that they could have used. So that would make sense that they would have one, but they keep bringing the orange backpack around for a reason. It's come around since season three and four. And the reason that they had the bag is because that they, that they didn't kill the guy directly, but they did not pick him up when they easily could have. Karma comes back around. I'm a, I'm a strong believer of that. You reap what you sow. You get what you give. You do what you have on there too. If you, if you, if you don't do the right things, it eventually catches up with you. And that's a, whole, that's a universal principle. Not Whether you believe in that or not, the orange backpack is a principle of that. Maybe that curse dies with Carl or not. And it's just a fun theory that I thought about it on there too. A lot of people agree with it. A lot of people don't. A lot of people will disagree with everything I have to say. And that's how it works too in life. And that's fine. But the reason that it's there is there for uh, some reason. that It's not just there. They could have found a million different bags. They could You could never see it again. But it comes up every so often. And when it comes back around, someone dies eventually. So exactly. Exactly, big sexy. Karma is a B, that's for sure. But we don't know where Sherry is on there. Sorry, I got sidetracked again. So Sherry will come back around, hopefully. She's in the comics. She sticks around and comes back around in the comics eventually. Will, will we get that? And the other thing I've been seeing about articles and interviews and stuff like that too is Kirkman values his comics and puts more precedent in the comics than the show by far. And he's all about his comics, and I understand that when you should be. He, he That's his pride and joy. And hopefully you've read the history of comics about Robert Kirkman and Image Comics and everything. It's a very interesting thing. If you haven't seen it, there's a five-part series on YouTube about it on sci-fi thing. It's about, you know, Image Comics on there. And they talk about a lot of cool, cool stories on there as well. But... Kirkman definitely values his comics more than anything than the show by far. And that's fine. And I love I loved the comics. I love the show, even though I do love the comics storyline better than the show. Definitely now, especially with, with uh, the whole thing with Carl. But I got sidetracked on the Morgan thing. Well, Morgan will eventually leave The Walking Dead alive. He's not going to die. He leaves and goes to Fear the Walking Dead on his own. And there's a time jump of Fear the Walking Dead that catches up with it. So it's pretty awesome. So if you haven't watched Fear the Walking Dead, I think you should. I, I give it a chance. First season, not too good. Second season, half a season's <clears throat> second half is pretty good. Third season of the Walking Dead gets or Fear the Walking Dead gets better, better, dies down a little bit and then gets good again. And then we're at the point now is what my take of it in there too. So the showrunner is Scott Gimple. Hopefully that should not turn you off. It's the showrunner is for season four is Scott Gimple. He's not the current showrunner of seasons one, two, and three of Fear the Walking Dead. He took over this year of season four filming. So Scott Gimple had a hand in that. And Scott Gimple loves Morgan. So that's why he brought him over as well. So I, he, he writes all that stuff himself. And I don't know if it's a pride or ego thing, but he's like, I'm going to write this. I'm going to make this show my show. I'm the showrunner. I have the power. The ego of things is taken over sometimes, and the pride of it. And he can say, I have control. I can do this. I'm Scott Pimple Gimple. I can make this happen. But <laughs> the Carl death is clearly wrong in my eyes on there as well. And also the idea of killing Abraham and Glenn in the same thing is also going to hurt of it as hard. Hurt the show as well, which it has for it. So I don't think that. Scott and Gimple is the worst person ever. I think he has done a lot of good things on the show. I like seasons four, five, and six, which he was definitely a part of. Season seven started to go down. Season eight, meh, it's there. I like it so far. Overall, Shiva death, like I said before, 
Call of Death, soon to be, as well. Not good on their well. So, you know, we need some saviors to go quickly. The bad ones, of course. How do you feel about Dylan? He's the one that was kind of nice with uh, Morgan and Jesus and Maggie. He was at the satellite post. Don't know if he's, you know, a wolf playing a sheep, if he's being whatever. But I like Dylan. Hopefully he does not try to team up with Jared and (laughs) take over the hilltop, even though I believe... I don't know if it was Jared or Dylan. It could have been Dylan, though. He said, we're going to take over this place. So we'll see what happens with Dylan. Um, I like the idea of Dylan being Dante in the comics. But I don't know. I, we got to have some nice saviors, some redeemable saviors. Like like David, Davey, terrible. The worst, One of the worst characters there. Jared, terrible. Gary's okay. but And then Laura, eh, she's okay. A rat, not a big fan of a rat. A rat, terrible name. Regina, okay. Dwight's come around a little bit. Simon, I do like, but he's not because he's great. He's, you know, a good team player. He's just a good actor. I like Steven. I like how he's given, you know, Gregory a problem <laughs> with everything. And Gregory needs to go too. So I don't think Gregory dies in season eight, second half. But I think a lot of the saviors do. The, you know, crappy ones that we that should have left a while ago. But yes, Jerry is great, Nikki. I'm glad he is around. He needs to stick around. I just don't know if he's still the prisoner of the saviors. If he went back to the hilltop with Maggie or what, because he was in the road with Gary. Maggie and Jesus stopped their car. Gregory is locked up in there. Simon is the one that killed Neil in the back seat behind Maggie. And he killed Neil instead of killing Jerry which would have been a really terrible move if they killed Jerry and basically Carl in the same episode. That would have been terrible. So, yeah, a rat needs to die. I agree. They're ACC on the show. Even though the actress is probably really cool, and Jadis needs to go as well. So the scavengers need to go. Jared needs to go. A lot of stuff on there. I got many more videos coming for that, what I want to happen. I have another video that I've been making shortly. I'll make a post probably this week. Or maybe tonight. I'll have another video tonight about it as well. So I want to see certain things that we need to have answered in the second half. And I hope you guys don't give up on the show. I hope your friends don't give up on the show. I hope that The Walking Dead also gives us a reason to not give up on the show. They're they're making it harder and harder and harder on it. So I'm hoping that stuff happens for the better of the show and becomes satisfying on it. So if you like Game of Thrones, you'll know that the show does some good things, does some annoying things, but then it's been satisfying as of late on there too. And we need The Walking Dead to be satisfying again. I don't know, you know, what they can do that can really do that though. So even if they took out Jadis and the Scavengers and Jared and Gregory and Simon and Regina, and a rat, and Tara, and, you know, or, no, no, Laura, not Tara, well, maybe Tara, too, if you don't like her, and whatever, but, you know, the main people you can't stand watching, mainly Jared and stuff, would you still be excited for watching the show? I don't know if it's enough. I don't know if it's enough for that as well, so I'll go for about six, seven more minutes, guys. Post your questions in the live chat or your comments. I do read the comments when it's done on there as well, so um, do you think Jerry will take Ezekiel's comic death? Uh, great question, Tudor, but no freaking way. Jerry needs to live on. The comic death of Ezekiel needs to be Ezekiel's. And because Ezekiel's cool and all, but certain comic deaths needs to happen. If if Glenn got his, Ezekiel needs to get his. But I need that... Uh, I need uh, Jerry to live on. I need Jerry to be a big part of the kingdom going forward. Because, you know, the kingdom's still around and it's a big part of the the series. So I need that to happen for it. So great question about my books. Where was that? Will you die in your books or are you plot armor? Great question. Um, I don't know. Maybe down the road, but I ain't going to die anytime soon. That's for sure. (laughs) So we'll see how it goes down because the whole point is to have my zombie apocalypse story. And if I'm dead, who's telling the story? You know, maybe I have kids in the book. Maybe I have something that eventually tells my story down the road. Maybe stuff happens there. Maybe 
someone happens to that. So you got to watch. You got to stay tuned for it. I, I got at least, I was doing more breakdowns of stuff. I got about 11 books in my head right now. I'm on book, book five now. So there's many more books coming forward in the future of it. So the story is worth getting invested in because there's a lot of good stuff, a lot of good people you'll like, love, hate on there too. So um, I am excited about it. I'm excited for you to read the books on there too. So hopefully Maggie has her baby. She's not showing because it's been not enough time. She's only like two, maybe three months pregnant at most in the zombie apocalypse where you can't just get food and prenatal vitamins and all that stuff in there. So M. King, you like book three the best? Have you read book four? M. King, have you answered that question? If you let me know, have you read book four? Book three and four are my favorites so far. So you're right in there with my favorites, book three and four, definitely right up there for it. Um, Nabila, I love Nabila too. So Paul Eagle 1000. Nabila, I need her to stay around. I need Jerry, Nabila, Henry, Carol, oh, Morgan's going to be gone. But who's going to take over running the uh, the kingdom down the road? Is it Jerry? Jerry? Is it Carol? Would love that. I would love for that to happen on there too. So um, really, Adam, worst mistake, bringing back Morales. That's the worst mistake. I don't think that's the worst mistake. I think that it's, uh, it's a bad mistake, that's for sure. But I think... Uh, Carl death is going to be up there as one of the worst and killing both Glenn and Abraham in the same breath is pretty bad as well. But even though they both have it. So M King book five is coming out uh, early 2018. I said that I'm writing it. And as we speak, as I get done this, I'll do some laundry and cleaning around the house. And then I'm going to write, finish up the second chapter. So it's going to be about 16, 17 chapters. So I got, you know, at least that, and then I got to edit it and be there and have my wife edit it and read it for it. So I would say probably end of January, maybe February for book five, but it'll be uh, it'll be there before you know it on there too. So if you haven't read book four, give you some time to read that, and then book five will be out as as, as soon as we got on there as well. So, um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, actually, I feel like your attitude about yourself and your books is similar to how Kirkman is with Eugene. He said he's the most like Eugene with anyone. Yeah, I saw that too. And I think it was New York Comic Con where Kirkman said that Eugene uh, is like him. He would be like Eugene in the books in there or in the comics. Like he, if he was anybody, he would be like Eugene. I think his favorite is Carl, I think is what he said, which is crazy to think that. But Kirkman is like Eugene in there as well. I mean, in my book, in the book, I'm Ryan, but I'm a, I'm a combination of a lot of things. And the development of that, the whole story arc and the whole, you know, story of Ryan is that he's living this whole world with his friends, family, and people around him. And the stuff changes him eventually. Yeah, that's where I'm, that's where I'm at right now, where is where like, the zombie apocalypse is not all you live up to it. And it's hard. It's a hard life. It's a hard world. It's a hard, harsh place. And we're getting into that harshness more and more and more and making tough decisions is going to end up weighing on, on that character on there too. So it's, it's good, bad, and indifferent. It's, it's a good thing that, you know, I like to put myself in the book series for it and be there as well. So call Papa in the house. So I, uh, uh, yes, Tara, do you have to buy? Yes, I'm sorry. My mystery boxes, I can't ship outside the United States. It's just not cost feasible. I would have to charge you shipping for that, and it would just be taking forever. And then also, I wouldn't know if it would survive the shipping processes. I don't trust you know, the postal services with these boxes on there too. So it just would be terrible on there. I'm sorry, I can't do that. But the big stuff about the Walking Dead mystery boxes is that we're branching out and we're doing more and more and more stuff. I'm getting some supernatural stuff. I know people like supernatural. So I'm getting some of those to put into my mystery boxes. I'll have a half Walking Dead, half supernatural box. I'm going to be doing Marvel boxes and uh, horror boxes, not just Walking Dead, but other horror invent horror uh, genre stuff on there. So I'm excited about the future of the Walking Dead mystery boxes. They'll just be eventually being mystery boxes. You can you can order a Walking Dead one or a Marvel one or a DC one or or stuff on there too. So I'm excited to have the uh, the the future of that. I got it on eBay as well to see if I can reach more people that way. But the shipping will definitely just be in the continental US for it. So I'm excited for it as well. So um 
Yeah, Josh, uh, I'm going to not do that. So sorry, I got some people here that uh, all I do is talk about my books. No, if you, if you saw for the past 59 minutes, I talked a lot of stuff about the uh, Walking Dead and everything. I answered a lot of questions. So again, people love doing that. So there you go, guys. I'm going to end on that note, not because of that guy, but just because it's about my hour. You guys are very awesome. So I'm excited for uh, the future of The Walking Dead, the second half of The Walking Dead Season 8. Um, I'm going to be doing these live streams every Sunday, um, except let me see what that Sunday will be. 28th of January. So I have, I'll be doing one Christmas Eve, even. I'll be doing one of that. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one on that. So I have nine of uh, live streams on Sundays before The Walking Dead returns February 25th. But I'm going on the Walker Stalker Cruise, and that's that'll be January, end of January. So I won't have be able to do one because I'll be on the boat and have some awesome videos for that. So again, stay in the know by subscribing. I have a bunch of stuff in the works, guys. I have videos every day for it. Um, a lot of good content staying on there too. Hit that subscribe button to stay in the know for that. Book series stuff, other stuff. I'm going to see uh, Star Wars next this, this upcoming week for my birthday, and I'm excited for that. Um, Instagram, at the PT channel. Uh, Facebook, everything as well, guys. Um, so thank you for joining me. I'm, I can't say it enough on there. You guys are awesome. You've been awesome. Uh, Walking Dead Mystery Boxes, get them while they're going. They're doing some good stuff. I got some, I'm putting extra stuff in them. It says, you know, five to seven items, but I've been getting like eight to nine items in there too. So I've been putting extra stuff, stuff that would be pretty awesome for you i want you to enjoy the boxes on there too so place your orders now i'm making go above and beyond but i want to under promise and over deliver so if i'm telling you five to seven and you're getting eight items in there with some extra cool stuff i want you to be excited about it so thank you for joining me this sunday december 17th i'll have one next sunday for it um, we'll be talking about a lot of other content. I've seen Star Wars by then, and I'll post some down there as well. So stay in though by subscribing. You guys are awesome. I appreciate everything going forward. The second half of season eight will still be will still be good, even the way the end, the first half. I think it'll still be great. Hopefully, you guys don't give up on it. I know I'm not, and never will. And uh, so post your comments below, hit me up on Messenger, all that good stuff, direct message at the PT channel on Instagram, all that. And I just want to stay in touch social media wise. Hopefully you guys have a good holiday. If you, if you can't meet the next uh, live stream, because that'll be Christmas Eve. Football season going strong. Movies, there's a lot of good movies coming out for 2018. I'm excited for it. I'll talk about all that stuff in other videos. But you guys are awesome. And thank you for watching me, guys. And have a good day. And I will talk to you next week and in other videos. Thank you for watching. You guys are awesome.